only slightly less powerful than the American Castle Bravo test, was the Castle Romeo explosion on March 27th, 1954. Like Bravo, it also had an explosive yield more than double what was intended, with a figure of 11 megatons of TNT equivalent. The device was placed aboard a barge in open water in order to reduce the fallout from tests like Castle Bravo. As with Bravo, the aircraft from which the test was filmed was 50 miles from the blast. However, during the test, US airmen flew B-36 and B-47 bombers at regular intervals dozens of miles from the blast to determine at what distances thermal radiation would damage an aircraft delivering nuclear weapons. Since the Romeo shot took place, Images of its explosion have become some of the most widely recognized to depict nuclear explosions in general, a status that is well deserved since the design tested in Romeo would be used for the first air-droppable thermonuclear bomb in any country's military arsenal. Only one year passed between China's second nuclear test in 1965 and its first hydrogen bomb test on May 9, 1966, a record for any nuclear power's rate of progress in developing its nuclear weapons. Moreover, on its first test of a hydrogen bomb, the Chinese military was able to drop the bomb from an aircraft, something the United States and Soviet Union had not been able to do causing many observers to become alarmed at the increasing pace of nuclear proliferation. Luckily, the Chinese government decided not to match the pace of the existing arms race between the United States and Soviet Union. For them, 
Merely demonstrating the ability to build and test each new weapon system was sufficient. The 1953 Grable test was the most infamous test shot of Operation Upshot Knothole carried out by the United States in 1953. Grable utilized a purpose-built 280mm howitzer to determine the feasibility of battlefield nuclear weapons against Soviet forces in Europe, where nuclear weapons and their long-term strategic implications became dangerously intertwined with short-term tactical roles. Upon firing, the 15 kiloton atomic shell flew 6 miles, or 10 kilometers, before exploding. The test would be a chilling success, and the United States quickly dispatched tactical nuclear weapons to Europe the following year. In 1957, the Soviets did the same, and in 1958, the United States deployed nuclear artillery to South Korea. In short, the Grable test set in motion a process where even a single mistake at the local battlefield level could unleash a global catastrophe that would existentially cripple both superpowers and the land between them, if not humanity itself. The Totskoi nuclear exercise carried out on September 14, 1954, was roughly equivalent to the Desert Rock exercises in the United States, in which large groups of soldiers conducted training exercises in close proximity to a nuclear detonation in order to simulate combat during a nuclear war. This test, which utilized a 20 kiloton nuclear bomb, was specifically intended to mimic combat conditions with NATO forces in Central Europe. Essentially, the 45,000 troops involved became guinea pigs as they went on the offensive through the test zone. The most hazardous point of the exercise came when the participating troops came within 400 meters of where the blast had occurred.
although a million people lived within a hundred miles of the test site. The American Central Intelligence Agency only learned of the test in 1977, and it only came to the knowledge of the wider public in 1991. By that time, only a thousand troops of the 45,000 who had participated in the Totskoy exercise were still alive.